Hello everyone. Hi, my name is Philip Pang. I'm the manager for marketing and events um, at PCMA Asia Pacific and really a warm welcome to all of you joining us today. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the music so far. <laughs> so for today's web webinar, we're talking redesigning for engagement in a virtual environment. Um, and really by the end of this 60 minute webinar, you will learn the principles and tools behind experience design, hear from case examples from our speaker, from our speaker Elaine, um, that will enable your next virtual event to be even more user-centered, more collaborative, um, and with thoughtful touch points um, to help you build connections with participants at, at your events. Um, previously, in our reminder email to all of you, you would have received a link to a mural board. So that really is uh, it's a collaborative space um, that we want to involve all of you in as part of our session later in about uh, midway through this session, there will be a, I guess called something like an interactive online workshop. So um, do look out for that later towards this session. And just a gentle reminder to everyone, please feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A box in the chat. So depending on your setup, it's either at the top or at the bottom bar. Um, use the chat box if you have any comments, thoughts, or anything to add to the conversation. And with that, um, without further ado, I will turn the time over to Elaine. Um, Elaine Ann, who is the founder and director from Kaiser Innovation. El Elaine? Hello. Oh, Hi, everyone. Go. How are you doing? <laughs> Everyone is at home in their pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Into the music. Yeah, move to the music. Okay, let me share my screen here. So, uh, yes, so thank you, PCMA uh, and Philip, for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, so, uh, I, I told Philip we want this to be interactive as well. So, it's not just me talking. So, we're, we're going to talk for 20 minutes and then we're going to move on to a workshop. And then we're going to move on to QA, okay? So, uh, if you have any questions, you can type it in the chat uh, or on the mural board, okay? So, I guess all of you are experiencing this right now, right? Because all of us are at home, and I know many of you are in like the travel industry, hospitality, the convention, uh, you know, uh, organizing like large meetings, right? Uh, and conferences. Um, so, there must be a huge change right now going on, right? Um, so, everyone is, uh, the new acronym is WFH work from home. Uh, did you know Japan, actually, there's a company designed a new pair of pajamas, PJs, where the top part is uh, a shirt and then the bottom part is like comfortable uh, clothes so that uh, people can only see the top part. So uh, what I want to say is actually there's a lot of uh, innovations coming, coming up too because of that. And uh, a lot of us are on Zoom every single day, uh, hopping from meetings to meetings, um, virtually collaborating, organizing events, right? I hope you remember to shut your camera if, uh, you know, unlike this person, he d didn't have any clothes on. <laughs> so, um, how many of you uh, know this word in Chinese? I know some of you are in, from Asia, right? Uh, like Malaysia, Singapore. You know the word uh, crisis in Chinese? It's called, you can uh, raise your hand if you like on the chat box. Yep. So the word crisis in Chinese is wei ji in uh, Mandarin, right? So it's actually both danger and opportunity, right? How many of you see danger right now in uh, COVID and uh, what's happening all over the world? You can raise your hand or, or type, type in the chat box and say yes or no. Or how many of you actually see opportunities right now? So I guess, you know, whether you see opportunity or danger, it depends on how you view the world. Like, do you see a cup that's half full or half empty, right? But one thing that we know for sure is, uh, now, if you don't innovate, certain industries are going to die. Uh, so, so actually, it's a really great opportunity to become very creative and innovative. Uh, I don't know if some of you have received um, 
some WhatsApp going around previously about like who is most responsible for digital transformation. And the choice is between CEO, CFO, and like the third choice is COVID, right? So I think rightfully so, <laughs> it's COVID that makes us all move forward, you know, in this situation. Okay, so now we're gonna make it a little interactive. Uh, I think Philip, you're gonna show a poll, right? So we have some questions for you. Okay, so question number one. So you can just uh, click one of the choices. Question number one, I wanna know more from you guys. Like what describes your role in the business events industry? Are you a, a business events professional, B, a supplier serving business events professionals, or faculty meaning like professors, uh, you know, in, in academia or others? Um, can any of you vote, Philip? Okay. Uh, yeah. I yeah, let's just post <laughs> and panelists can vote. <laughs> <laughs> we are seeing um, well, about more than half on what well, events professionals, the planners, the in-house planners from the Okay, well, why don't I finish this and uh, they can uh, type, type in their choices and then we can show the results. Yeah. 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 Okay. Number two is I have been heavily involved uh, in or have planned a virtual hybrid event in the last six months. So it's either a yes or no question. We want, just want to have a gauge on uh, the 42 people here in the, in the group. Uh, have you have everything just stopped or have you guys evolved and try to do Zoom meetings or virtual events? Okay, number three. Um, since Philip asked me to talk about user experience, I just want to gauge how many of you know, have heard of user experience or you're actually doing it. Um, maybe you can type in yes or no. Okay. Shall we show the results? Okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Right. So this is one way to include interactivity into your events. Okay. Number one, which best describes your role in business events industry? So most of you are in business events industry. That's 63%. Oh, I wonder what are the others? <laughs> If you can type in on the chat box, any other professions that we don't really know about? Okay. Make a two pajamas. <laughs> okay, funny. Uh, all right. And number two, okay. Have, okay, so actually 60% of you have already tried doing virtual events uh, or hybrid events. And the other 30% is no. So I guess we can, you know, share a lot of things today. Uh, number three. Okay, so ah, that's great. Half of you have heard about uh, user experience or uh, this is my first time. Yes, some are no. So half, half maybe. Yeah, a little bit more than half uh, is first time. Awesome. Thank you. Great. So uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, so why, <laughs> why Philip uh, from PCMA invited me? and uh, what's, what's my background, right? Um, so this is a one-page bio of my background. Um, I'm originally from Hong Kong. Um, I lived and worked in the U.S. for 12 years in the 90s. So I went through the first dot-com boom and bust, okay? Uh, went back to Asia for 18 years uh, with my company called Kaiser Innovation. Uh, and we primarily help a lot of Western tech companies in Asia. Uh, mostly China also. So because we work with a lot of tech companies and I also went to a very tech school, Carnegie Mellon, um, so we're very familiar with uh, technology. Uh, so this whole migration to online, this remote thing, we've I've actually been doing for more than 10 years, like since even 2008, okay? So we help a lot of uh, Western tech companies like Google, Intel, Airbnb, Dropbox, uh, both hardware and software in, in Asia. Um, and uh, of course, before, prior to COVID, I've also delivered a lot of talks and workshops and now everything is going online, right? So I can share some of our experiences of how we're doing it online as well. 
Okay, and I recently published a book as well. Uh, if you go to elaine-ann.com, uh, you can see my book and uh, if you like, you can order a copy, but uh, my book is about experience innovation. So I'm sure you know uh, that recently a lot of companies are talking about digital transformation, right? Like how to, how your organization can leverage technology to uh, evolve, right? Uh, one thing is actually a, a lot of our audiences are millennials like coming up, so they are very digital. Uh, even for banks, they're not going to use like, like go to a physical bank, right? So a lot of companies, especially in Hong Kong, uh, a lot of banks have to come up with apps and websites uh, to engage them. And of course, for you guys uh, in the events industry, same, right? Right now, I think uh, with COVID still unclear uh, when it's gonna end, uh, but businesses have to move on. So we'll have to reinvent ourselves on how to create more engaging experiences online. So how many of you think remote event is actually possible or remote work is actually possible? Any, um, any feedback from the, on the chat? Can you, can you type in a yes, is it possible or no, if it's not possible? Yes, okay, great. I wanna show you a few examples to inspire, okay? Um, have you heard of this company called Envision? Actually, this company is in our industry and user experience. Many designers use the InVision to prototype uh, new products and services. They have 700 employees in their company and there is no offices. Okay, if you look at the very bottom of this page, InVision has 700 employees. The company doesn't have a physical headquarters. And it worked entirely remotely. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I think some people in traditional industry might be shocked about this. Um, but I think it's true. This has already been going on with uh, mobile working uh, for at least 10, 15 years already. That's why there's a lot of co-work space coming up, like, uh, like WeWork and all that. Um, and especially in industries where you can be virtual uh, and like in Silicon Valley, uh, companies like Facebook and Twitter already announced permanently work from home. So their employees have a choice of not coming back to the office. So I've even heard from my friends that some of them are actually moving out of California to go somewhere where it's cheaper to live, but they can also have a Silicon Valley salary. So it's totally possible to do remote work. Uh, even when you organize stuff. Um, actually, since I, I came to, I'm now in Vancouver in Canada. So I came over actually before Chinese New Year to see my folks. Um, and because of COVID, I, I couldn't go back, right? So I've already been here for like more than eight months. Um, but we still have projects going on uh, in Hong Kong and in China. Uh, my colleagues are in China. Uh, and Hong Kong. Um, so we've been doing this completely remotely and I was actually pretty grateful that it's actually all, it's actually fine, like even with our clients, uh, that it's okay to work remotely. Uh, in fact, you don't have a choice, right? You just have to make it work. Um, oh, I also want to show you uh, this NBA example of how they created virtual events the NBA some cool new technology is bringing fans into the stands down in Orlando not in person but virtually you see each home team can select about 300 fans from all over the world to log in and cheer for their team their images will be projected onto large screens set up in the stands it's all in real time so fans can react naturally to the plays so it's unclear right now how the Sixers will select their virtual fans for each game. Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons want to take things a step further. They said they'd actually like to hear some virtual boos to make them feel right at home. Okay, that's so uh, NBA made it happen. Okay, so they, they brought in like 300 virtual fans. You know, they're all sitting at home and watching the NBA team play. Um, so uh, I go, I'm going to show you one other example. Uh, and it's from, have you heard, guys heard of Tony Robbins? Can I see some uh, yeses or noes? Okay. 
No, you haven't heard of Tony Robbins. Okay. Yep. Yep. Philip Pang says yes. Jeannie says yes. Ronald said yes. Okay. Uh, oh, Stephen says yes. Okay. So I wanted to show you Tony Robbins because Tony organizes more than 10 uh, events with maybe 10,000 or 20,000 people per event, like sometimes. Um, he, he is actually a, um, it's like in the South, South improvement industry. Uh, he consults for Bill Clinton and like celebrities, Selena Williams and down to inmates. Okay. Uh, so imagine he, his whole, like his whole business is offline in conferences, conference uh, events in hotels, uh, all year round. Um, and how did he manage to pivot? <laughs> okay. Just in the last few months. Okay. What he did was he created a 330, 60 degrees virtual studio. So all the participants participate from around 143 countries, uh, 2,200 participants all over the world. And they managed to charge exactly the same price as offline. Isn't that nuts? Um, let me show you a video of that. Oops. Sorry. It's about time to get this party started. How many of you are ready? Welcome to the stage, Tony Robbins! How y'all doing? Yes. So this program comes at an exciting time. <laughs> How you doing? How's your life? How's your business? Every event I've done, I've talked about winter because winter is coming. I've been talking about now. It's no longer coming. It's here. Okay, and one other one. Story of our life is not the story we lived. The greatest story of life is the comeback. Life challenges us when we stop growing. Life gives us a challenge to make us grow. The challenge is here now. We're all taken to our knees at times. COVID and things like this have taken everybody to the knees at some point. It's not where we are, it's where we choose to go now. It's time to stop managing your circumstances and start to become the creator of your life once again. That means making decisions that you're uncertain about, but you're gonna find a way. Or if that doesn't work, you'll change your approach and find a new way. You will find a way when you bring all these parts together. Okay. So um, I really encourage some of you, if you are interested, you can go to Tony's virtual event. Now you don't have to fly. You don't have to play, pay plane tickets. You don't have to, um, you know, pay uh, hotel fees. And, um, you know, you can immerse yourself. Actually, they are able to create really immersive experiences. And you see people jumping <laughs> around at their homes in their, in, in their living rooms. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty impressive, I would say, the turnaround that, that they managed to pull off. Okay. Uh, one, one other thing I wanted to uh, share with you, and after this, we're going to brainstorm some ideas together about how we can make uh, an online event more engaging. But recently, I attended an event. After the event, they asked us to uh, write down our address. Uh, like, first we have to answer a question. If we answered it correctly, we can write down our address. So I wrote down my address, and then they delivered a pizza to me the next day, okay? So uh, actually, it scared my, my parents because we got a box, like, the next morning, right? Um, in, in, like, in front of our door. So I upgraded it to, to breakfast the, other, the, uh, after, the day after. Um, so I think that's a really great way. And I was really surprised because the online event was hosted by somebody in the U.S. And I live in Canada. So they managed to pull off sending all of us pizzas around the world. So I guess they, um, what they did was they uh, called up all the pizza, local pizza places, the, the closest one, and then sent us the pizza. But we, we, uh, we were only asked to like take a photo and share it on our social media. So that was great marketing for them. And as a participant, I really remember this company. Okay. Some inspiration there. So 
Um, I think one of the things uh, I mentioned previously is uh, that we've been working remotely for, for a while. In fact, I think before this COVID, um, I'm usually reluctant to t tell people in Asia that we work remotely because I think people are not very used to that idea. But because of the nature of our work, we help a lot of foreign companies like US, European companies in China. So we never get to see them physically. Uh, it's always nighttime when we talk to our clients, uh, when it's their daytime. So naturally, our business evolved into remote. Plus, they fly over to China uh, or to Hong Kong um, every, like for projects. So that's why uh, we are able to, you know, work remotely. And, and also because our clients are very tech savvy companies. So uh, very early on, we're already very used to using Zoom, using uh, Miro, uh, using digital, uh, digital online SaaS software like DocuSign, um, yeah, and all that. So, so that's why we have this experience. And I just wanted to share with you, I think we're in the vortex of a shift in culture, right? Because if you think about it, we were in the industrial age, right? Actually, uh, China just is, was, is still in manufacturing, right? Uh, but it has already shifted to digital. Um, but in the industrial age, the way we manage projects is very hierarchical because you're managing factory workers, right? Uh, the chain of a command is from top down. Um, however, digital age doesn't really work like that anymore. Um, and like the values are completely different. In the digital age, in order to build a digital and remote team, trust is integral. Uh, and what I find is you need to build trust with your team first offline and then move it online. If there's no trust, then it makes it so much harder because once you're online, um, it's less multidimensional. Uh, you can't feel that person. Uh, you can't um, re interact as well as when you're face to face. So trust and integrity is uh, most important. Uh, whereas in the old model of working, it's more control and compliance. Like it's, everything's about rules and policies, right? Uh, and it's, it's sequential. So remember, especially in Asia, sometimes I find that uh, if the company is hierarchical, I, I have something called the U-shaped communication. So let's say there are A and B company. When A company needs to talk to B company, if they need to pass the message from the boss to the manager, to the junior person, and then like to the secretary, and then all the way up to another company um, of the same rank, uh, it creates a lot of issues. Um, but for us, when we work with a lot of U.S. companies, they're a very flat culture and everything's about delegation. Um, so the team that comes over to Asia is the team that makes the decision. Um, so so it operates like, a, like these, uh, uh, a small team of um, squad <laughs> where you, you, know, you go to war, you, you uh, have these squad teams like go down to different places and solve problems and come back up. So that's how, how we actually work. So it's a, all about uh, collaboration uh, and inspiring each other. So in the old model, you'd also leave, it's very title driven, right? Uh, who is the boss? Who's the manager? And also information is kind of withhold in one part of the company. Um, in the information mage model, it's a must that you share information uh, to the whole team. So you'll see in terms of emails, people will be CCing like 15 people, okay? Uh, in the way we work with uh, you know, US companies. But I find like when I, when I go back to Asia, sometimes, uh, have you heard of uh, the Chinese whisper? You know how when you pass one message and you pass it to another person, the other person passes it to another person, the other person passes it to another person. What happens is the, the communication gets very distorted. And then actually things takes like five times longer to compete, complete. So I believe we are actually moving from a centralized model or organization 
to a distributed model or decentralized model. Um, and you actually see this even in cryptocurrency in like Bitcoin. Uh, so in the past, it has been a central organization, like even banks are organized that way, right? We all have to go through central banks, but now with technology, it's possible to not have anybody in total control. It's more democratic and distributed. Some people are very uneasy with this model, but I actually believe that's the way it's going. Because um, I've actually gone through the first dot-com boom and bust in the US uh, in 1990, between, uh, I was there in 19, early 90s till 2002. So the bust was year 2000, around year 2001, right? Um, so back then, it actually inspired me uh, that the internet is actually helping to have less people but do more work. So you'll find that companies are actually getting smaller and smaller, not bigger and bigger. Actually, the bigger you are, the less flexible you can be, and, and then you will not be able to respond to the market. So nowadays is personal brands. You can become a YouTube celebrity, like, you know, overnight. I mean, not exactly overnight, but you can, right? Um, so now smaller teams have as much competitive power as very large companies. Okay, so I actually, even back 10 years ago, that's the way we develop our teams. Um, uh, we only keep core functions in my company and all the others like, you know, IT or, you know, research, uh, finance or banking, um, all the others are outsourced. And I believe that's the way the world's going to go. Yeah, and it's not going to go back to the old ways. Okay. So this part, I actually want to talk about what is user experience. Any of you know what is user experience? Uh, half of you said you have heard about it. Can you say yes or no to this? What's your definition of user experience? Especially for uh, events, right? Okay, so user experience, uh, short form is UX, means actually uh, we take care of how people feel, how things work, and how you design, let's say, a event that will change people's lives. Um, so it's the practice of designing products, processes, services, events, and omni-channel journeys and environments with a focus placed on the quality of the user experience and culturally re relevant solutions. Okay, so let me give you an example. Yeah, um, I don't know if any of your companies have always, uh, you know, say, oh, we need to do just digital transformation and we need to make an app. How many of you experience that? Can you type yes if you've experienced that? We need to make an app, but then we don't know what the app should be <laughs> or what functions. Okay, thank you, Anna. Uh, we need to make an app or a website or a tablet or something like that, right? So I, I see many, many companies. Uh, so I'm just putting Mary in here just, just so that you guys can relate to it. Uh, just an example, um, like for example, hotel industry, right? So we need an app, but what do we need an app for, <laughs> right? So I see many, many companies, sometimes they build a digital platform, but they're not pu putting the user in the middle, okay? But so this is a very product-centric way of seeing the world. Um, so when I say uh, user experience, we mean we flip the chart and we look at the user and put them at the center of the world. Why? Because uh, if you recall, when you travel, what do you first do? Let's say you wanna, you wanna go to France and you wanna book a hotel. What do you first do? You might you know, go online, go on uh, TripAdvisor, you might go on C-Trip if it's in China, you might call the travel agent, right? You might do all your research. You might ask your secretary to do that. Um, how many of you would actually go to a hotel website? I mean, unless you're a member of it, right? Um, so you research first and then you book. That's the user experience. 
And then, you know, you get your ticket and then you'll get your notification on your mobile. And then you might do your check-in uh, also online and you might get, also get a reward, right? So this is the user experience, not from the company perspective, but from the user perspective, okay? Um, we actually, in our industry, uh, when we design products and services, we actually map out what the user experience would look like. So let me show you a example. This is uh, a user journey that we have mapped out actually after interviewing like 10, 15 users. And this is for a retail company. Actually retail company has the same problem as the convention or conferences industry because nobody in the past eight months are you know, really shopping offline, right? Um, so this is for a company that sell eyewear. So they're like, oh my God, we have to really go online. And then they were, weren't sure why people were not purchasing online. Um, so after interview, so it's actually after interviewing like 10, 15 people that we found out like what are the pain points and how do people normally shop in retail? And then we can propose innovative solutions or, or brainstorm together with the client. So, so you can see here, if you read from top left, uh, we actually map out the faces of the user journey. So let's say, so what's the motivation for buying eyewear, right? And also for eyewear, there is prescription and sunglasses, right? So the user, um, or sometimes you guys call customers, but we call it user because user uses products and services, right? Customers are the one who buys, but they might not always be the user. Uh, for example, for in conventions or conferences, the buyer or the customer might be the company, but the actual user might be the employees, right? So those are two different things. Um, so we actually look deeply into what motivates people. Uh, okay, so for example, for eyewear, it might be they have blurred vision or uh, they need an annual checkup or their glasses broke. So we actually map out step by step. The motivations, searching for a new pair of glasses, uh, they need to check their eyes, research. So by the same token, so we actually map out the whole user experience for online and offline as well. So this is the online, uh, on, online and then offline, okay? So by the same token, for events, you can do the same thing. You can look at, into how people are first aware of your events, uh, how they onboard to register, on like let's say meetup or eventbrite and then you know when they participate uh, do they do a poll right so here's just one example okay so what is ux and why right why why ux because we don't want your audience to feel bored basically uh, did you know that nowadays most people have an attention span of less than a goldfish. A goldfish have an attention span of nine seconds. And uh, humans have less attention span than eight seconds, right? So you, you can see actually in my presentations, it's usually, usually visuals. Uh, so because visuals communicate much more information than text. Oh, have, you, have any of you seen this, um, seen this diagram? Can you type yes if you have? Any of you or no if you haven't? No, no, okay. No, oh, no, 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 oh, okay. Well, this is gonna be really useful for you to know. Okay, thanks, Ronald, Jaslyn, Cherry, Cecilia, Daniel, Ginny, okay, great. Did you know the way people learn is different through different media? Okay, this is called the learning pyramid. Okay, the way we've been taught in school is usually the top 20%. <laughs> so when it's a just a lecture, actually like now, you only learn like less than 20%. But when I show you pictures and videos, you're more engaged because it's visual. Um, the, 
visual, uh, we absorb like 60,000 more information uh, when it's visual than text, okay? But, but look, where is the bulk of learning? Because when you organize conferences or events, most of it is learning, right? Like people are, you're training people or people are learning from you. Uh, or you organize events for speakers to, to, to teach them, right? Um, so see, actually, if you actually get them to participate and talk and discuss or simulating the real thing, that's when they are mostly engaged. So here I want to show you a tool that you can use. Of course, I showed you Tony Robbins and NBA, but some of you might be, oh, wow, we have to build a huge screen, then it might not be uh, too immediate, right? Um, um, Mural is, is a tool that we always use for online collaboration because it can be visual. And we're going to do that in a second uh, in the workshop. But I just wanted to show you how we work virtually. Uh, here, here is a startup that we're doing. And for example, we've interv we interview all of these people on online, virtually, okay? All these people, we come up with what we call personas. These are target users. And then the whole team, like we had five people, uh, we did a creative matrix. We brainstormed different ideas. And then these are all the votes, the stars of the votes. The whole team was virtual, okay? Uh, we even had uh, teams like draw out, draw ideas, because sometimes just text doesn't communicate that much. Um, and here is a good tool for you to use. You can, you can um, sign up for Mural or you can, Go to Post-its. Your Post-its has an app. You can draw your ideas on a Post-it and you can take a picture of the Post-it. It basically snaps all the words or the pictures from the Post-its and it becomes uh, images and you can put it on mural. And that's how we are able to bridge the physical and digital gap, right? And then out of there, we were able to touch, choose, we have methodologies to choose which ideas are better, more strategic or high ROI or low hanging fruit, et cetera. Okay, so last but not least, let, uh, we just summarized something, a uh, framework for you to maybe uh, reference. So a virtual experience framework is, uh, if the acronym is called VISUAL. So, it's V-I-S-U-A-L. Um, so try to make your events very visual, right? Because that's when people don't have to read text on a PowerPoint and they get sleepy, right? Um, make it very interactive. Like we have sound, we have polls. Um, also, there are breakout rooms for Zoom. Um, give people a surprise, like send them a pizza maybe. <laughs> uh, stay focused on being user-centered. Um, uh, being user-centered is like being a very, um, very good girlfriend. <laughs> uh, thinking of all those tiny, tiny areas of where we can soothe them or make the experience very seamless. Use audio, use music at different times, and also focus on what they are trying to learn, right? And uh, we actually use this uh, framework called design thinking. Some of you might have heard of it. Can, can you show me if you have heard of design thinking or not? And we do design thinking training. Can you type yes or no? Yes, some of you, Cherry says yes. Okay, Emma says no, okay, BL says yes. Anyone else? Okay, so if you're interested, uh, we, we also do corporate trainings on design thinking. That's a process on how to innovate, okay? I think we're all venturing into a new area in terms of doing um, all these virtual experiences. Um, I think pe some people are testing VR, right? Uh, but so with this framework of innovation, um, instead of teaching you, uh, like giving you the fish, we're teaching you how to fish. We're teaching you how to become creative and innovative within your organization, and we can do it remotely. Um, so you can empathize with your audience, which is your users, uh, the people going to events uh, online, uh, and we can come up with, uh, ide with ideas and we can prototype and test it. Okay, so let's move to the workshop part, okay? So you can experience some of the interactivity.
um, you would see in the chat box that uh, our colleague Cherry has really put in the mural link. So as you know, our participants. Okay. Get so um, I think Philip has uh, sent you guys email on how to use this, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, but it doesn't matter if you don't know how to use it, I can show you. Okay, so here uh, on the left, it's just my background. Uh, this is my email, you wanna contact me. Um, where are you from? So we want, we, we create this mirror board so that we can interactively show where people are from. Okay, so we have a lot of people in Asia. So you can pull up a little post-it and then you can uh, do command plus to, to make your, it bigger and then you could type here your name, right? Hello? Okay. Okay, nobody's from uh, South America. <laughs> 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 Oops, I don't know why Elaine became so big. Okay. All right, all right. So actually, Elaine is in Vancouver. <laughs> okay, let's zoom in. So I'm in Vancou Elaine, Vancouver. So we have uh, Chloe from Los Angeles, Natalie from Chicago. Oops, this is a little tiny one. Oh, this is a copy. Okay, well, I know um, for some of you, if you're not used to online tools, it might take a little time for you to adjust to, but you know, people, humans are adaptable. So I think um, once you get used to it, it's actually really fun. <laughs> it's like an extension of yourself. It's like when you're driving a car, you know, eventually the car is an extension of yourself. Oh, cool. So we have people from Hong Kong. Uh, we have Dawn, Michelle, Ronald from Malaysia, Sherry from Singapore, Yi Yun from Singapore. Okay. And then some people from Australia. Oh, a lot of people from Australia. Australia. Lots of them. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Carrie, Bridget, oh, Melbourne? Somebody's called Melbourne or they're from Melbourne. <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> Carl, Carly, Carolyn, okay, because it's all of you are from uh, Australia, it's so crowded. <laughs> okay, anyway, don't worry. Uh, the, the ball will stay around, it's not going to go away. So you can keep uh, typing your name if you want. Okay, let's move on to the other. Do you need uh, two more minutes, maybe? Okay, maybe, uh, but, but at least we know, oh, somebody's from India? Okay, I don't know why this poster is here, but. <laughs> but I think mostly Singapore, uh, Malaysia, uh, and uh, Sydney, right? Uh, I mean, uh, Australia. Oh, I think some of you are in- uh, New Zealand. From New Zealand as well, right? Very nice. Yeah. You can type in the act, like the short form of where you're from, like Hong Kong is HK, New Zealand will be NZ, Australia maybe AU, so we know where you're from. Okay, so the, this is one way on for to you to engage your audience. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, there's so many. <laughs> That's a very big Cecilia there. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's move on. Don't, don't worry, you can still uh, type your name. Whoops, okay. Let's move to the second section here. Okay, I wanna know from you, what kind of challenges are you facing uh, for your virtual events? So uh, why don't you just grab a post-it note, you can, uh, you can go to the left side here, can you see? Left side here on this post-it note here, and you can drag a post-it note out. You can drag one out. You can drag different colors. Okay, here we go. I'll drag more. And then you can just type it on there. So what challenges are you facing right now? And my colleagues, uh, Sonia and Michelle are gonna help you guys group the challenges into similar groups. Uh, this methodology is called uh, affinity diagramming. It's part of the uh, design thinking process uh, what, how we innovate. Okay, usually uh, if we have more time, we'll ask people to interview each other and get the insights before we, we do the, you know, ideation. Okay, why don't I give you guys like two, three minutes to type up uh, what challenges you have. Shall we get some music? 
So <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, we can. Oh, um, tell us about affinity diagramming. What, what, why, why do people do affinity diagramming? I, okay. I um, actually, a lot of the methodologies that we use is for solving what we call wicked problems. <laughs> wicked problems are problems that are very complex. It's not. It's not like you can do analysis where it's like A plus B equals C. Uh, we're looking for patterns. So let's say there are 45 people here, right? So I, I'm guessing, okay, I think we need some help with <laughs> this pink was and no, it got too big. Okay. Okay. All right, here, okay. Um, so let's say we have 45 people here, right? So if people, type in the problems, like the challenges, right? The challenges they have. We're bound to see a pattern, right? Like, okay, let's, let's zoom into some of these. Okay. Yeah, Miro has already become part of my, my arms because I'm like one, <laughs> one with the, the software. So it's very easy for me to drive because uh, it's just about getting used to it. Okay, so we see uh, some of patterns. Okay, so here are about tech issues, right? So what we can do here is, uh, I'll just demo this. So this cluster here is about tech, tech issues. Okay. So if you have tech issues and put it around this area. Okay, brand owners to focus on wanting to have the coolest feature to outshine competitors without thinking of attendees experience, content and practicality. Uh, interesting. So maybe part of that is to get the brand owners to experience um, and, and, and online experience uh, themselves, right? Mm. Or one way is to do what, what we call uh, user research, uh, have your target users like interview them, right? And what we do is we, we record it too. So for example, uh, in, in this example that I showed previously, uh, we, we're trying to design a app for kids to learn Chinese, okay? So we interviewed all these parents and kids, okay? Uh, we actually record everything too, with their permission. Uh, so that's a lot of evidence to show your boss or, or the brand owners, like your clients. Uh, if 80% or 90% of people are saying the experience is not good, you, you have some ammunition behind you, right? I think sometimes it's the difficulty of convincing, I guess in this case, the brand, brand owners and you know, you need, you need the interviews, you need the evidence, you need to justify. Um, I think that, that that all plays in part of this whole um, user experience process. Well, or you can just simply do after the event, do a poll, <laughs> you know, well, yes. how many people <laughs> think it's good or not. And then if most people think it's all boring, then you already get the answer, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Zoom, Zoom polling or uh, Slido will be good. I'm currently forlorn and I'm not able to interact with my clients because of it. My boss is the only one left in the office and tasked to respond to clients. Oh, so you're, okay, so this is the U-shaped issue, right? Like you don't have direct access with uh, your clients. Um, yes, so uh, like I said, it's a really a, um, culture culture change that needs to happen and people are going to learn very fat quickly that the more hierarchical you work the less effective you're going to be because the information passing from one person to another it just takes a lot more time and it will distort no formula on how to calculate the registration fee ah interesting well like i said tony robbins is charging the same fees <laughs> and he's doing it online of course he has the draw right he exactly because his events are not boring his events are highly interactive he even built this 360 degree studio too many events are free out there ah interesting okay good 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 i see your colleagues michelle has been you know they've grouped it up to delegate experience delegate experience uh, okay get the ball rolling, get the ball rolling. People feel all overwhelmed. Oh, so by too many Zoom events, <laughs> too many options out there. Okay. Keeps keeping sponsors involved when they prefer to meet in person. Um, 
yes. However, sometimes that's not an option right now, right? To meet in person. Yeah. Um, and when, when the bottom line is not showing, you know, profitability, I think people need to learn to, you know, to, to adapt, right? I agree. Helping them see the value of virtual events and get them to sign up, okay. Um, maybe get people to sign up on a good virtual exp uh, event experience first. How to mm -hmm. encourage client to host a digital event instead of canceling or postponing. Okay, so do you see here's a pattern. All of you are mentioning the same things. All of you are mentioning the same thing. So maybe the title here is actually convincing people, right? This is more like convincing stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Do you see a pattern? Uh, difficulty in, right? Yeah. Is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. This 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 area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so all of you are saying the same things. So you see, like when you collaborate and share, you find that you're not alone. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> saying, saying the same issues, right? Oh, okay, yeah. speakers are not trained to deliver online. Okay. Yes. Nobody is. <laughs> Nobody has ever experienced COVID and all have to be locked down at home for eight months. So speakers, maybe speakers needs training too, right? Uh, speakers um, not trained to deliver. Yeah, but sometimes it's kind of weird to talk um, to air. You know, when you can't mm. see people's face and you don't see the interactivity, maybe more interactive tools are going to show up in the next year or, two, year or so. Yeah. Production time is high due to having to coordinate so many people in advance. Interesting. Okay, so this is another category by itself. Education not including meetings or development and engaging early. Sure, actually... Education traditionally has been one-way communication, right? Yes. Um, even in schools, right? So actually, I think a lot of schools, uh, universities are facing issues too because now the parents are like, why am I paying so much for my kids to go to university, but they're actually sitting at home? And watching uh, video. And watching or... videos, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, I think what's going to come out of this is a lot of innovations. If you see the glass is full. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of automation, a lot of virtual, if virtual reality things maybe come, come out too. Yeah. Uh, virtual apartment shopping. <laughs> or virtual yeah, traveling. I think, yeah. yeah. I think you, you, you summarized it very well with the change from the industrial age, to the digital age where now it's, it's really the values driving behind it is trust and integrity. It's that whole distributed and everyone's collaborating. And so I think, yeah, it's, it's about time that the education sector, you know, it's, yeah, we really yeah. do for, for a change. Yes. Actually, yeah, I'm uh, a bit on, on time. I'm wondering whether I want to. Okay. Move yeah. To let's, let's move to the other section. Okay. So you can always come back to revisit these themes here. Uh, why don't we move down there? Okay. So this is also part of the design thinking process. And one, one section is about, we phrase all the problem statements uh, into how might we. Uh, and we already did it for you, but usually uh, we actually can do it together with the team. Um, so we phrase this as how might we be creative in making the virtual events more engaging? So we put four categories here just to make it easier for you guys to brainstorm. So here, maybe you can spend a few minutes to brainstorm, like, what can we do, right? Um, uh, I gave you some examples, sending people pizzas. <laughs> um, uh, so give them surprises. It could be different type of surprises. It could be award rewards. Uh, maybe it's a virtual um, wheel of fortune, <laughs> like a randomization, so people uh, get, get prizes. Uh, okay, let's see what, what some of you have. Sound. Okay, sound of audience clapping. 
tech connectivity. Okay, uh, this 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 could be a little bit more um, specific. Uh, what, one tip for writing the post-it notes is you need to write in a way so that anybody can understand without explanation because you're not going to be next to them, right? Upbeat music. Okay, that's what we did today. Pop up virtual MC. Okay, oh, demo man. video. Great. Okay, so the creative juices are coming out. Do you see? We can solve this together, right? I, I, I actually like that. You know, it's not, uh, you know, someone says, oh, let's come together to do a brainstorm, but actually there's a form of like a structure. Um, yeah. Whether it's sound, it's interactivity, it's content, it's online tools. So, you know, people can actually focus on, on something. Or even in your company, you can put up a mural board and ask people to, you know, contribute the ideas. And it doesn't have to be at the same time either. Right? Exactly. Um, of course, if it's same time, it's better uh, for people to communicate. Um, yeah, human connection, interactivity. Um, oh, plus uh, on Zoom, there's actually breakout rooms. So instead of like 40 people at the same time, you can break out into small rooms of four or five each. Then they can see each other's faces and make a connection there too. And then maybe afterwards you create a WhatsApp group uh, you know, to so that they have more of a human touch, right? Because when you have so many virtual people, uh, people lose that human connectivity. Yeah. Spe speaking of the human connectivity and the WhatsApp group, maybe we could do a demo also of, uh, you know, how people can connect later as well. <laughs> oh, like yes, 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 yes. And all yes. those things. Yeah. Uh, oh, this would be funny if, if you guys made uh, <laughs> Zoom Zoom clothes for your colleagues and send them. <laughs> <laughs> so the Zoom clothes only have the top part that is uh, formal. <laughs> oh, but it's pajamas at the bottom. Yeah, it's right. the pajamas. <laughs> yeah, so think of like creative surprises that you can send colleagues or your know, clients. Uh, and people will have fun, right? Wellness yeah. activities, like what, doing yoga? <laughs> Point reward system, song summary, okay? Q&A sessions, Q&A, okay, Q&A, same thing here. Zoom background themes, yeah. Yeah, uh, we can also sync up our Zoom background, right? Stretching, yes, you can have people, okay, if you guys want to do it, we can do a stretching here too. <laughs> like the wellness break uh, once yeah, in a while. Uh, yeah, because you don't want people to be sitting for too long, right? Yes, exactly. Virtual exactly. Party. Okay, so all of, us, all of us can be creative. You just need to have the environment have the setting and the, and the framework for people to do so, right? And I would encourage you to even take it up one level to have, you know, people have post-it notes uh, and markers and have them draw it on the physical post-it note and download the post-it app to take a screen capture so that their drawings can come on Miro as well. Okay, content. Okay, Slido, open, post-it app. Online polling, yes, yes. I think more tools are gonna definitely come out in the next year or so. Yeah, definitely. Make education with entertainment, yes. Um, you know, uh, having humor <laughs> in your content <laughs> is a must, I think. Uh, yeah. Crowdsource ideas, we're doing this now. Um, shorter terms, yeah. We divided this talk into three parts, actually. Breaking up content oh. into chunk, yes. You don't yeah. want people to sit for eight hours per day, right? And uh, and it's funny, Tony Robbins event, they're still doing five consecutive days. <laughs> um, but you guys can, can, can try some time to join those events and get inspired. Uh, mix, yeah, mix content type. Yeah, so maybe every, every half hours, like switch pace, put your consistent style, good, good, good. Breaking up, okay, fit real time to real life schedule. Fit time to real life schedule, yeah. But you know, one thing is what I find is nowadays, the world is flat. I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Canada, Philips in Singapore, all of you are all over the world, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's global time. Yeah, maybe we need a global watch too. <laughs> okay, so lastly, okay, it's, it's already nine here. Um, yeah. And yeah, so, just the time. <laughs> other, so I encourage you to drop down any questions here if you have. Uh, we can take a few more minutes to answer some questions if you want.
Correct. Or, and I'm just showing you. Um, what we can do is that we can keep this mural board open, put in your questions, um, you know, and Elaine can, you know, just you could put in a, your response to all of these yeah, questions. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah, research, I can, things like that. Yes, I can do a add comment and I can like put my mm. comment. Yeah. yeah. So, so oh, lastly, I want to show you something super cool. <laughs> so, um, so here's our LinkedIn profile, okay? So what you can do is go to your LinkedIn, go to your LinkedIn profile, and uh, all of you should have a LinkedIn a URL. So mine, if you go to your LinkedIn profile, this one here, okay, so this is mine. Uh, you can go, uh, so here, do you see like LinkedIn, dot com slash in slash Elaine and slash, right? So this is my page. So you can just go copy and then, whoops, and then go back to mural and then you just go paste and then it'll immediately paste here. Like it the automatically does the, the transfer. Yeah, I think yeah. sometimes it's, it's also your your settings, um, pri privacy settings. Sometimes you know your picture doesn't appear, but you know what you can do just copy your image, drop it in, um, and you're all set. So yeah, okay, if you have trouble doing that, don't worry. Just put it on this post-it note here. <laughs> yes. I'll put it on diff different post-it notes. Don't worry. Just <laughs> just copy and paste your LinkedIn profile and put it on here. Put your name and then put your profile, and then yeah. we'll be everyone will be able to find you, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Any questions? Lastly, any questions here? Okay. One, how to design an event that is not a conference or expo for a client annual gala dinner. Okay. Have you heard of Zoom dinners? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually done Zoom dinners with my, uh, my, my extended family members where we just have a table and then we put a laptop on, at one corner of the table and then they are on the other side having dinner as well. So we, yeah. <laughs> we kind of share, or maybe if you can design it nicely, um, you, it can be like a mirror of this room, right? That you're in. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, I guess the, 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 the whole I, idea is to, you know, you, Going back to your point about being user centered, who who are who are who are you designing for? Uh, who is taking part in in this yes. uh, client annual gala dinner? And you know what are your objectives around it? What do you want to achieve? I think you know you could then design everything around that based on all the tools that that uh, you shared. Um, yeah, maybe you can have Uber Eats deliver the dinner to <laughs> ten people, and then <laughs> they all eat at home. But like over yeah, Zoom and do a Zoom quarantini uh, martini. <laughs> That's true. As well. So Elaine, yeah, I think- Yeah, creative, right? Yeah, exactly. Thank you to all our participants. We are about five minutes uh, over. Um, any last, I guess, a word of advice, you know, for, for our participants here who are looking to get started on, I guess, a design journey or just thinking a bit more deeper into the user experience for in, in the virtual event space, maybe, maybe just a line or two um, for participants. Yeah. We I would say, you know, this framework that we put together, just a reminder that keep, you know, things visual, interactive, create surprising experiences, create magical moments so people remember. You can be as crazy as you want, right? I, I got a pizza, you know, <laughs> from the U.S. It was, that was crazy. Uh, and and that, that was thick, right? Uh, think about what people need at home, right? Maybe send them, uh, send them some uh, yoga mat or, or uh, you know, a dumbbells to exercise. I don't know. Um, yeah, just be user focused, user centered, uh, focus on the user experience um, and make leverage technology. Like technology should be there to help you and not be a uh, obstacle, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I will end off with my favorite line from, from, from this session today, being user centered is like being a good girlfriend or a boyfriend. I think that, yeah. that 
vaccinated <laughs> or you're thoughtful, you're making sure that you know people are taking care care of and oh, yes, absolutely. Well for them. Absolutely, exactly. yes. And so with that, um Thank you, Elaine. Thank you to all our participants who stayed with us. I apologize for, you know, we have overshot about six minutes. Um, if you have enjoyed the mural board, it will continue to be on. We will share that out um, as a post event, so like full follow up. So I'll we'll look at the like all the ideas that. Yeah, you just leverage yeah. like 40 people's brains. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And so with that, um, thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you, our participants, um, you know, in our next webinar or any of our Community Connect sessions. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it, um, this session, and we hope to see you soon. And with that, okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.